I don't remember exactly how many times we would go to the emergency rooms. I can tell you it was many. I'll never forget the look on my daughter's face or the tears that formed in her eyes. If someone took the time to understand that she was really in a fight for her life. Picture, if you will, a busy emergency room where an ambulance with a patient experiencing symptoms of tachycardia, dizziness, chest pain, low O2 sats, comes in at the bay. Immediately, there's a convergence of this team of medical experts um, upon this individual, and they employ the techniques necessary for saving this person's life for returning them back to wellness. At the same time, not long after the ambulance arrives, arrives a, a family member or a loved one. And a member of this medical professional team meets that individual with compassionate understanding and describes the techniques that have been employed uh, to help ensure that their loved one is going to be OK. And this staff member recognizes this loved one's urgency, this sense of needing to know um, how their loved one is going to be. And then there's some education around involving this loved one, this family member, um, into becoming part of the person's ongoing treatment and road to recovery. Now picture a similar scenario where a mother and their daughter walk into an emergency room with similar symptoms, chest pain, tachycardia, low CO2 stats, dizziness. There's no medical team that converges upon her and her mom. There's no heroic interventions that take place. There's little regard for the fear on this mother's face and the sense of urgency that she feels. And yet, another seemingly desperate attempt to save her daughter from the inevitable, inevitable death that looms around every corner. In fact, the only intervention employed for this young lady is a urine screen and several failed attempts to start an IV. We would hope that this time, someone, anyone, would see beyond the disease or the junkie in Bay 7, as she was so eloquently termed at one occasion by her treating nurse, who thought such an announcement at the nurse's station was both appropriate and professional. The lack of both engagement and empathy not only left me and my family discouraged and furious, it served to perpetuate the continuation of the cycle of the disease by leaving my daughter feeling dehumanized and demeaned, and myself feeling hopeless, helpless, appalled, overwhelmed, isolated, disappointed, and angry. Oftentimes we would leave the emergency room with no treatment at all and no willingness even for a conversation around where my daughter was and her readiness to change and get help, or around the medical consequences of prolonged use. Any education around disease model of the substance use disorder would have been welcomed. Yet on several occasions in local emergency rooms, when my daughter and I were seeking assistance, the way we were treated by the medical staff caused more harm than good. The lack of both engagement and empathy served to perpetuate the continuation of the cycle of this disease for both my daughter and our family. And it left my daughter feeling dehumanized and demeaned, and myself isolated, frustrated, disappointed, and angry. Oftentimes, we would leave the emergency room with no treatment at all, and no willingness for even a conversation around where my daughter was and her willingness and readiness 
to get the help that she needed. We wanted someone, anyone, to see beyond the disease or what they believe to be a choice to the kind and loving human soul that my daughter is and was when the acuity of substance use disorder was managed. If we don't change the stigmatization within our, our emergency rooms, which is often the first and only point of entry for so many families and individuals, it will be impossible to make the progress that we are so desperately seeking as we take on this epidemic. And an epidemic it is. We have to be better at recognizing that these individuals are people in need, humans in need, and do a better job of understanding what's driving the issues if we ever want to change the face of substance use disorder. Each patient you serve, regardless of circumstances, is an individual deserving of compassion and an individual who has a family that loves them. They are there because they need help, they need support, and they need understanding. And you, in that moment, are the only person who can provide that to them. I hope that in those moments, you will think of my family story and it will help you move beyond the frustrations you feel in your job, beyond the stigma and the generalizations to stand with and support your peers and resist the compassion fatigue that can so easily creep in. In the midst of this epidemic, it can make all the difference in the world.